Good evening, guys. I got another video. At the end of the last video, I said I was going to do a video on how to match transistors, MOSFETs in particular. So, uh, I've had this document for a long time, and I've, I thought it would be a good video since I was scared to do it a long time ago, but uh, it was actually really, really easy, pretty effective. Um, Long time ago, Dad used to say when you buy transistors and if you buy them in big lots, they're pretty much matched close enough. But as in Nelson says here, we want to match them even closer. And the reason why we want to do that is, thank you by the way for DOA Audio, I borrowed your schematic here. Because this one I could find on and it was nice and big to print and it shows multiple outputs. So. The reason why we want to match them is we don't want these all pulling current unevenly. We want them to be pulling all the same on this side and then all this side on, on this side. So negative or positive and negative. If we have one that's pulling too much, it's not going to be balanced. And it's going to be working. All the rest of them are. This one's going to be working harder than the other ones. And it just won't be. You won't get a proper sine wave and there's other reasons I'm not going to go into that it's kind of like having a tug of war with five people on each side of the rope so you got 10 people and you got five on one side and five on the other you got three people on one side that are pulling and there's two that are just standing there and then on the other side we got five that all pull it's it won't pull evenly when the um when you get your sign way through it so the reason why we do matching is so that way they're all equal um, so I made a little test jig with a breadboard and my power supply and my multimeter here and I think I matched with these already but I think it took me 10 minutes to match 12 of these so pretty simple um, I have a MOSFET here you just stick it into the breadboard read the last three digits uh, on the uh, meter and then you write the number down some people put a little sticky on the front right here. I just write it with this fine point pen on the back and go from there. Uh, right here we have a couple of them, 658, 658, 658. So obviously that would be a group of three. And then on the ELF minis or all the ELF projects, you would use this for the front stage of the amplifier. Works good. If this was this one, you would, of course, try to group them as close as possible uh, in here. So I flipped the camera around, pointed at the meter, show you my setup, pretty easy. Uh, I've done this video five times now and I keep wrecking it. So hopefully this all goes proper. And uh, I will put a link to Nelson's easy to read, easy to understand document in the link below. And uh, yeah. Before I flip the camera around, I want to say thank you to all those guys that are watching my videos and thumbing up my videos and subscribers. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to let you guys know again, the purpose of my channel is to put out little videos, uh, show you what I'm building, kind of projects, what I'm winning against and what I'm losing against, i.e. my last video I put up, I lost $300 in MOSFETs because I was overdriving amplifier. My fault, lesson learned, is what it is. Um, but the purpose of my channel is to buy projects on eBay or other projects from other people who make kits and stuff, build them, and then after I build them, I want to test them with my shiny QA401 that I've been playing with and learning more and more about, and then I want to give them away. So like and subscribe, help me out. And uh, hopefully by the end of the year, we've got some, enough subscribers so I can monetize and start buying some projects. Uh, I'll be asking you guys, what would you like me to buy, build, test, and give away? So that's my little spiel. Hopefully it makes sense and hopefully you guys agree to that because that's what I want to try to do. Uh, I'm not doing this to make any money to do my own stuff. I want to do it for you guys. And uh, yeah, so let's flip the camera around. And um, I've already got my... Power supply set to 15 volts, 30 milliamps, plenty, plenty. And I've got a FET right here ready to plug in and show you. So let's do that. Okay, so we have a 15 volts coming from the power supply. 
it might not be working 100% because I might have the frame rate set low on this, but this says 15 volts. You won't see any milliamps because it's not drawing anything. Here is our MOSFET is an IRF 9610. So what we do is focus this, plop them into here like that, and we have a reading. So what we would do is take 699 and write it on the back of this MOSFET. Pretty simple. So just like how I've done to these, we have all of these ones. So we have 656, 660, 661, 675, 658, 58, 58, 668. So we got a couple that are really, really close. And I believe in this document here, you guys can read it after. Uh, Nelson wants to go to the last two digits. So, I mean, they don't, they have to be 10, like within 10 millivolts, right? So, 656 would still be good with 658. 668 would be close enough to 675 as long as we have something from 675 to 668 and in between that for the third one obviously our 584 is way too low um, and that would be a beneficial of buying more of these so this is only 12 and it wasn't that expensive so these are only a dollar each and i think if you buy more of course they're cheaper but yeah so here is our schematic that i was talking about from diy audio thank you and of course it's a nelson pass circuit and it's for a bacb i'm not sure what amplifier that is because i don't really need this much power but i might research a little bit more but anyways so as you can see we have multiple mosfets on the top multiple mosfets on the bottom now these aren't n and p's these are just n's but they work together so we want to have the top positive ones attached to the positive rail matched for the top and then ones attached to the bottom rail negative matched and yeah here is his little document i will put a link to this in the video as i said before and yeah Let's see if i can show you guys what i've done here we got 15 volts coming in here yellow is negative red's positive so we got our source resistor coming in going to source and then back here we have a jumper going from here to here so this fet goes g d s and that left to right so we have g and d shorted and in here we have g and d shorted and then we have our meter strapped to here which is right there and then we have s with the other probe positive with a resistor coming in 15 volts okay which is exactly what we have here our resistor is coming in to s and we have our probe attached to that pretty easy um, i'm not too sure what some people put and how long they use but uh, i was told 30 seconds is good enough I did read somewhere that uh, you want to have these sitting at room temperature. You don't want to obviously have them cold or bring them inside from somewhere, plug them in and start matching because they're going to change. Um, so these have been sitting at room temperature for about a week. And uh, yeah, so pretty easy, guys. Hopefully this will help you guys. And uh, you don't need a high-end fancy meter like this. I call it high-end because this was $600 for me. But uh, you don't need that detailed of a meter i'm sure you could probably use one of these aning i think it's called no this one's a side the other one i have over there has it is a back there there's another meter but uh yeah so there's my video hopefully this helps please like and subscribe and uh, give me some comments have a good day